don't escape a second time because the first place that they will come to look is here and you will put the children in danger. Michel and David were hidden children, both survivors of the Holocaust in Belgium. Michel, the son of Belgian resistance members who helped save thousands of Jewish children, including David. They didn't think to help to save their self, themselves. They wanted to help the others. When the Nazis invaded Belgium, Anosh and Schiffer Verber fled to France and promptly came back. The danger was uh, well known if one read Hitler's Mein Kampf. He didn't think a leader, a political leader, should live and save his skin when it was his duty to lead his people that he left behind momentarily. Anush and Shifra were active in Sekur Mutuel, a Jewish aid organization. He printed a Yiddish paper with coded messages. She began hiding children. In September 1942, they joined the Comité de Défense des Juifs, the Committee for the Defense of the Jews. David Inavloki was one year old when the war broke out. His father fled to France. When the Nazis circumvented the Maginot Line, his life was saved thanks to a stark warning from a communist survivor of Dachau. I was walking and a German car, a military car, stopped. And the officer looked to my father and said to him, Wohin gehen Sie? Where are you going? My father said, Antwerp. He looked to him, he said, Rhein. Took him in. And the driver turned back to my father and told him, You are Jew? My father said, Yes. Hide yourself as soon as you are home, as deep as when even couldn't see your shadow. David's father urgently moved the family out of Antwerp. By now, the CDG was busy moving Jewish children around the country, a complex operation. You had to provide money in the hiding place, so you had to visit them uh, again. It was not permitted to the parents to go there. Shifra Verba stored the children's details in five separate books to keep them safe in case the records fell into the wrong hands. As there was the original name of the children. There was uh, where the, uh, the contact with parents, the, where they were hidden, and so on and so on. When a strange woman turned up to take the Inavloki children, their mother refused. So she couldn't uh, uh, leave the children, let go the children without knowing who, who, the, who the lady that came to fetch us was, really. She didn't know, it was a secret, and no, nor the place where we had to go. And she didn't know she would, would see us again. We were crying, all of us were crying. And uh, I remember still my mother saying to me, before we left, to my brother and me, don't forget you are Jews, don't forget you have a sister, and also don't look to the Germans straight in their eyes. But on the way to a convent in Charlois, where they were first hidden, David was ordered to memorize his false Belgian name. And she said, your parents are dead in a bombing in Antwerp, and you are Catholics. We didn't tell we were Jews. We hid everything. We went to church at 6.30, I think, each morning. And I did like the others. I was like a monkey. I did also my cross. You learn it very quickly. Michel was also hidden with a Christian family, and sometimes he still fantasizes about being back with his beloved Maman Louise. I still consider her as my mother as well. Not that I want to be Catholic, but I didn't, I didn't feel all the time Jewish, uh, you know, as if I would have stayed home during the war. The rescue of Belgium's Jewish children is a mighty legacy, which Michel and David have researched to keep the story in the history books. I feel proud of them, mainly proud of them. And uh, I really had to fight very hard to have people recognize their role. And this is something formidable.